And now, those ragtime years. Carmichael. The name of that music you're hearing is Ragtime. That's real ragtime. Yes, that is genuine article. You know, some people refer to it as uh, classic ragtime in quotes. Now, you're going to hear a lot of music in the next hour, all of which will be associated with ragtime in one way or another. And I hope you try to remember that what you heard on this pianola is real ragtime, and there are distinctions. Now, a uh, good many years before World War I, ragtime was like a continuous soundtrack to the American scene. People played it, they sang it, and they danced to it. Good music for good years. Yes, indeed. <laughs> of course, uh, we didn't take it too seriously in this country. But uh, when ragtime went across the ocean, serious musicians over there like, uh, well, Debussy, said right away said that uh, these people are making a new music. And it was these old ragtime uh, composers that was doing it. Now, when I, uh, when I lived in Bloomington, Indiana, we had an upright piano in our parlor like almost everybody else. It was on the payment plan. My mother played ragtime. She played for Baltimore, actually came through town. Well, you could walk down Wallace Street past the Litson's ice cream parlor, and the smell of caramel and chocolate was all mixed up with the ragtime tune coming from a pianola like this one just lit up like a Christmas tree. And when the circuses came to town, the calliopes played with the raggy tune. County Fair, Ragtime went round and round with the merry-go-round. As you know, other towns like Bloomington had band concert nights, usually on a Thursday night. They'd build a bandstand in the public square in front of the courthouse or out in the park at the edge of town. And the brass bands would invariably play cakewalks and two steps like this. Thank you. 
Sometimes folks went on a trip to Indianapolis and they'd come back talking about the good time they had in a beer hall where they heard songs like this. mighty few people in Bloomington who ever got as far away from home as New Orleans, but every now and then some traveling salesman would tell stories about that pleasure-loving town where great musicians like Tony Jackson and Jelly Roll Martin played and sang music that was also called ragtime, but they said it wasn't the same as the ragtime you heard in Indiana. In a moment, we will return to Project 20. And now we return to those ragtime years. So every year, we were hearing more and more of this kind of music, so it seemed like ragtime syncopation was a way of life. <laughs> well, even these titles give us some idea of the energy and innocence of American life in those times.
century. Ragtime tunes to fit the new zip in American life. We were moving faster and higher in those early ragtime years. Time music was rough and ready, and so was Teddy. Roosevelt, that is. If any man personified the cockeyed optimism of the ragtime years, it was this energetic gentleman. never cease. You give a nickel to the lady and she gives you a ticket. Then you walk into a big dark room and pretty soon you see great big pictures that move. exposition. People came from all over the country to gape at this stupefying display of Missouri and Rococo. But behind those marble curly cues in the cafes on the midway, you could hear a lot of good ragtime. The Spanish cafe. And in the old St. Louis concession, there was a beer hall where you could hear real Missouri ragtime, played by the best piano players in the country. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner and ragtime cotton champion of the world, playing Mr. Scott Joplin's sensational new rag, inspired by the world-famous water display on the fairgrounds, the Cascades! At this time, although ragtime was at its peak, there was still a lot of folks that felt that it was vulgar and trashy and that ragtime should go back to the 
Well, the sporting houses and the honky-tonks, where it come from? Preachers preached against it, reformers tried to reform it, but ragtime wouldn't take a back seat. No, because people loved it. Time for a small geography lesson. Long before 1900, ragtime was born in the heartland of the United States, right here where these three rivers meet. The Missouri, the Mississippi, and the Ohio came right in here, and they brought people and things from the south, from the north, from the west, and from the east. Some of these people had musical ideas, and they all gathered here and blended around the great state of Missouri. Now from the south came African, Spanish, and French ideas. From the east came the folk songs of England, Ireland, and Scotland. So you might say that in e these folkways, as the, mainly the Negro folkways of the Mississippi Valley, uh, music men met, exchanged ideas, which was later formulated into a thing called ragtime. Now let me introduce to you some of these early music men. First, Scott Joplin, the acknowledged king of ragtime composers. Blind Boone, a ragtime legend. Tom Turpin, called the father of St. Louis ragtime. Scott Hayden, protege and collaborator of Joplin. Percy Wenrick, from Joplin, Missouri. These ragtime pioneers and many others were born in the areas around the big rivers here. And later on, when most of them became traveling musicians, they stuck pretty close to the rivers as they wandered from town to town. They were never very far from the sounds that came from the river boats. Boats that carried cotton and molasses and sugar and peanuts from New Orleans to St. Louis and points north. the cargoes made up rhythmic songs to lighten their hard work. The air was full of work songs of the roustabouts and boatmen, and it was music that had a peculiar snap to it, a syncopation. The ragtime men heard it and put it into their piano music. Musicians played many of the same songs and made up dances to fit the new syncopated rhythms. bands were playing jigs and reels and square dances with a primitive ragtime beat. Sometimes the ragtime men played in brass bands, too. And they often worked in tent shows and minstrels where they learned a more professional music. the sound of the long hair was heard in the land. Naturally, some of the music men would leave the river and look for jobs back in the hills. Here, people sang the old English ballads while they worked. Sometimes the tunes were sung in the old-fashioned way, and sometimes in a syncopated manner that was new. Yes. 
Along the rivers, there were little country churches. People would gather there to praise the Lord. And they made music that had a lot of syncopation in it. Little David, play, play on, on your heart, hallelujah. Play, play on, on your heart, hallelujah. hallelujah. Little David, play, play on your heart. And shout it for joy, play, 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 Ragtime men went all the way down river to New Orleans, and they went to Congo Square, where people were still doing African dances and playing strange syncopated rhythms on the African drums. You can be sure this group is not about to take a trip to see the dances in Congo Square. No siree. They're going to the fair. People like them from all over the country flocked to the Chicago Columbian Exposition in 1893. There were 55 acres of this kind of display. And there was the Midway. Here there were jobs aplenty for the pioneer musicians and maybe for the first time they were all gathered in one town. And it was here on the Midway that the general public first heard the new kind of music that in a few years was going to be called ragtime. In the Dahomey village, native Africans were playing music that was ragtime syncopation in its earliest and purest form. One of the biggest attractions on the Midway was Sandow, the world's strongest man. Oops, there. And there was Little Egypt and her Hoochie Coochie dance. Missouri was the cradle of ragtime. That's where Scott Joplin finally settled down. And that's where the Maple Leaf Club gave him the name for his most famous piece. They say that late at night in the Maple Leaf Club, the customers liked to join in the ragtime songs while they played cards. It might have sounded something like this. Oh, Mr. Johnson, turn me loose.
Before he settled down in Sedalia, Scott Joplin roamed the Mississippi Valley like the other music men. He probably worked at some of the same jobs and he listened to the same music. But there was a distinct difference about Scott. He had a vision, he had a dream that his kind of music, ragtime, was destined someday to be a real national music. You see, Scott was no ignoramus, uh, he was no primitive. He studied the classics and he worked hard at writing classical arrangements. All oh, long, long before George Gershwin wrote his beautiful music to Porgy and Bess, uh, Joplin had written an opera incorporating Negro folk music. Yeah, later on, he wrote a very fine composition. And considering the times, it was very, very advanced in the way it integrated words, music, and dancing. And it was called the Ragtime Dance. <laughs> Let me see you do the ragtime dance. Turn left to do the cakewalk dance. Turn around to do the slow drag. Now take your lady to the World's Fair and do that ragtime dance. Let me see you do the cleanup dance. Now you do the Jenny Cooler dance. Turn the other way and do the slow drag. Now take your lady to the World's Fair and do the ragtime dance. Cake walks soft and sweetly. Be sure your step's done neatly. Keep up a slow advance. We'll put you in a trance. Now form a line as you did before. You're dancing now with your best bow, but the only real thing is the ragtime dance. Ragtime dance. And now we return to those ragtime years. It didn't take long for Tin Pan Alley to hop on the ragtime bandwagon. But of all those early music men, I'd say that Percy Winrick's music enjoyed the most popularity in Tin Pan Alley. And his songs had a Missouri twang, something like this. letter in your bag for Mr. William Jackson Bragg was the question asked the postman in the hall but the burly boy in gray only shook his head to say Bill there's nothing no letter today 
All Bill could do was cry and whine Because he only had one dime And it was way past Liza's salary day She promised when she set sail That the mail would bring him money So what could Bill say except I wonder what's the matter with the mail never been so late before I've been up since seven bells and nothing slipped under the door Liza must have surely got her pay and she promised she wouldn't fail to send me just a little every salary day doggone what's the matter with the mail Gone. What's the matter with the mail? Well, but the Broadway musical producers were a little hesitant about picking up ragtime. I guess they thought it was still a little trashy. And besides, the carriage trade still preferred those dainty little operettas about mythical kingdoms and grand dukes. But finally, musical queens like Marie Cahill demanded that the uh, songs with the ragtime flavor be interpolated just for her. Down in the jungles lived a maid of royal blood, though dusky shade. A marked impression once she made upon a zoo and every morning he would be down underneath a bamboo tree awaiting there his love to see and then to her he'd sing if you like a me like i like a you and we like a both the same i like a say this very day Ragtime years began with one dance fad and ended with another. It came in when the whole country was dancing the cakewalk. shows carried the cakewalk and ragtime to every town in the country. Thank you. 
the cakewalk, it's the two-step. Then from about 1912 to the end of the ragtime years, America has gone dance mad again. Everybody's doing it. Doing what? The turkey trot. Irene and Vernon Castle are the dance idols of the country. outdoors. They're dancing everywhere now, and the ragtime bands are playing faster and faster. The bunny hug, the grizzly bear, the camel walk, the kangaroo dip. Look at them go. And if it's speed you want, why, man, we've got automobiles now that go over 100 miles an hour. are faster too and funnier and there's a ragtime piano player in every theater Ragtime fad brought about the first big boom in the phonograph industry. Come on and hear, come on and hear, Alexander's Ragtime Band. Come on and hear. Did I tell you the title of that song? Alexander's Ragtime Band. Words and music by Irving Berlin. Irving is now the number one boy in popular music. Now, Alexander's Ragtime Band is a far cry from the classic ragtime that I mentioned, but I certainly think it has the flavor of it. Now, let's listen to some more songs of Irving, which were written at the end of the ragtime era when America was dancing as if there was no tomorrow. Morgan cried, I don't 
give a care. Let me spend another dollar throwing up his hands in the air. And Mr. Gould began to holler, stocks are going up, going up, going up. Stocks are going up, going up, going up. So come on, let's dance that society fair. It's a fair, it's a fair. I love a piano. I love a piano. I love to hear somebody play. I love a piano, a grand piano, simply carries me away. I know a fine way to treat a stein with. I love to run my fingers over the keys, the ivories, and at the pedal. I love the metal when that Ruski comes my way. I'm so excited if I'm invited to hear the long-haired genius play. So you can take your fiddle and your bow, give me a P-I-N-O-O-O. -O. I love to sit right beside an upright or a high-tone baby grand. Won't you play a simple melody like my mother played for me? harmony play a simple melody use a good thing that sets you high to your dream and won't you play me some right just change that classical knife to some sweet beautiful drag if you will play me a copy of a tune that is choppy you'll get all my old claws and that is simply because I want to listen to her In a moment, we will return to Project 20. And now we return to those ragtime years. In 1917, America went to war. In 1917, Scott Joplin died. A small event in the middle of all those explosions. Now, the war meant the end of many things. You might say it meant the end of the ragtime era. But those pianos never stop rolling, and ragtime never completely disappeared. Why, there's a whole new regiment of ragtime stylists developing in the East, like James P. Johnson, Lucky Roberts, that's Waller, and Willie, Willie the Lion Smith, what a character. And then there's U.B. Blake. U.B. wrote one of my most favorite songs, I'm Just Wild About Harry. And even today, Yubi, at the age of 77, plays a mighty fine ragtime piano.
Bag time. <laughs> As you may know, there are quite a few young fellows around even today who dig the ragtime message, like uh, Wally Rose, Wilbur the Paris, Turk Murphy, and then there, there's some entertainers like ragtime Bob Darch, and there are many others. But I wish you to remember that ragtime is just not a quaint word in the dictionary. The word itself may be disappearing to some extent, but ragtime is in the heart of most of our popular music today. And uh, most of us will remember those ragtime pioneers. We'll remember Sedalia, Missouri, the Maple Leaf Club, but above all, we'll remember the music. Thank you. 